All right, guys and gals, back to work here this afternoon. It's about that time of day again here, folks. Got a brand new week, got a brand new month. It's Monday evening, of course, March the 2nd, 2020. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time, it's great to have you with me because I help traders find the best entry setups using a very simple three-step strategy that we teach and trade together every morning in our trade room. But my job's a little bit different tonight. Tonight, my job is to help us find the best levels of support and resistance for tomorrow, the best entry setups and exit targets for tomorrow, and most importantly, my job tonight is to help keep us out of trouble by avoiding all the big traps waiting for tomorrow, Super Tuesday trading session. I got a great video in store for you guys and gals tonight. We're of course all the charts are all prepped up in the background. Get some oil, some S&P, some Nasdaq and some gold. Had some big movers here late in the day. So we got a lot to prep for for tomorrow's Super Tuesday trading session. And of course, we'll grab the calendar for tomorrow. We got an election here in the US. We got some big news coming down the road here in the US. I want to make sure you guys know what to be watching for, what to stay away from tomorrow as far as the economic news calendar goes. So charts are ready. My news is all ready. We're ready. You're ready here with me. I'm excited to be back here with you. I always appreciate you guys sticking around every evening with me here on this nightly newsletter. Before we jump in though on the video tonight, I want to remind you if you're here for the first time tonight, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you never miss another great video. And don't forget if you have any questions about anything we talk about tonight, drop those questions in the comment section below. And as always, if you tune in every evening to watch this video newsletter, hit that thumbs up button for me. I always appreciate you guys supporting this YouTube channel. So don't forget, subscribe, subscribe, hit that thumbs up button if you love the video every evening. And if you have any questions, drop those questions in. I'll be hanging out after we publish the video tonight to answer all the questions. But let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right in. I want to start tonight's video by taking a look at tomorrow's economic news calendar. Let's grab the Econo Day calendar calendar here and let's see what we have here on the schedule for tomorrow now of course this is the first week of a new month, and anytime we have the first week of the month, we always know Friday, that first Friday of the month, is what's called Non-Farm Friday. The biggest news we get is this Friday at 8.30 Eastern Time. Now, that's not going to have too much of an impact tomorrow, but you will hear, I will talk more about this as we go later on in this week, Wednesday night, Thursday night, we'll start talking more about the this employment number. In fact, we'll hear from the ADP employment report at 8.15 this right on Wednesday, and that will set the tone as we go into the rest of the week. So what's the major news on the schedule? What's the major scheduled news? Be that Friday morning, 8.30, non-farm payrolls. What else do we have going on this week? Well, we also know that later on this week, on Thursday and Friday, we've got a big OPEC meeting. And unless you've been living under a rock, we know the price of oil has tumbled hard from the upper 60s down to the mid 40s. We're trying to get back to that 50 bucks a barrel level right now. OPEC has a mess on their hands right now. They're having a hard time keeping these prices elevated above 55, 60. And so we do anticipate as we get later on this week, we're gonna probably start hearing more from OPEC. We should hear something concrete, I would imagine, at this point in the game. I would imagine OPEC is probably going to make a statement at some point Thursday and Friday about a production cut. And what that would mean is, is that tomorrow and Wednesday, traders are going to start to kind of perk up a little bit, listening into some of the news chatter to see if we get any clues ahead of time, right? So again, we're anticipating with the OPEC meeting in Vienna on Thursday and Friday this week, we do anticipate sometime in the next couple days, the market's probably going to get wind of a production cut and we're probably going to get some you know again we don't know when this will be but it will usually be early in the session before 11 o'clock eastern time and we're definitely watching for that as we go into tomorrow and wednesday's trading session so be aware of that as we get closer to the end of the week we're listening in right now right to hear more or if we hear anything at all, right, ahead of that OPEC meeting on Thursday and Friday. So those are really the two big deals later on in the week, right? 
At the same time, though, in addition to OPEC, everyone is also listening in. You know, we got the coronavirus right now that is really wreaking havoc around the planet right now. Markets got a big boon, right? Big rebound today. But you know, you know, everyone in the U.S. today they got long today because they're anticipating what? They're anticipating stimulus. They're anticipating uh, a, a rate cut, right? They're anticipating the central banks to start printing some more money, right? And and provide some protection against the economic pullback right now of this virus, right? So everyone tomorrow and Wednesday, as we get closer to that employment number on Friday, we are definitely listening in here right now to see if we're going to get any more, you know, we we, we heard from the Fed last week and they kind of danced around the idea of a rate cut. We have a, we have a meeting, the FOMC meeting on the 18th of this month, and everyone's thinking we're going to get a good heads up on a possible rate cut at head of that news so everybody this week is really going to be listening in closely will we hear from the fed regarding a rate cut will we hear from opec regarding a production cut those are really the two biggest known unknowns we know they're coming at some point this week we don't know exactly when they're going to happen and as always right we'll do this together every morning in our trade room and of course we'll be listening in right on my news feed every morning starting off at eight o'clock eastern time but let's think about here for a second though what's up with tomorrow right tomorrow is what's called super tuesday there's no major news on the schedule, but tomorrow, and I, I'm not a, I'm not much of an expert on this stuff, but I think we have a dozen different states here in the U.S. that are voting in the Democratic primary. Now, we may see, you know, what I would what I would normally say is expect to see a little bit lower volume, not not you know not crazy lower, but. A little bit of lower volume, right? People are ahead of the polls, right? They're going to be distracted tomorrow. People are watching television, watching the headlines on this. I would anticipate with that. I would anticipate with that. That's again, they call it Super Tuesday. It is the Tuesday where there's a bunch of elections across the U.S. I would anticipate that volume might be a little bit lower tomorrow. But I mean, the last week we've seen triple the average volume amount, so we may not even notice it. To be honest with you, right? We may not even notice the uh, the pullback in volume tomorrow. Again, I would anticipate some lower volume tomorrow because of that big election day in the U.S. But again. Because of all the corona stuff going on right now, the back and forth, we may not even notice that low volume. So really quick recap here. And again, don't forget, tomorrow morning, we'll do all of this again tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, like we do every morning in our trade room. But tomorrow morning, no major news on the schedule. You'll notice there's not a lot happening tomorrow on the schedule. So will we hear from OPEC? Will we hear from the Fed? Will we get a little bit lower volume because of Super Tuesday here in the U.S.? I don't think the lower volume is going to be our problem tomorrow. It might be, right? But judging what's happened the last uh, you know few trading sessions, low volume. Volume does not look like that's going to be our problem to overcome tomorrow. But we will be keeping our eyes and ears open, though, for OPEC, right? And, of course, the Fed. And, of course, we'll, 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 we'll talk more about how to play into the rest of this week as we come back in tomorrow night's newsletter. So we'll be here all week here this week covering this stuff as it develops. I am very excited for another big day in the trade room tomorrow. And don't forget, guys, we trade together every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. As an advanced member, you'll have unlimited access access to our trade room. You can register as a client by using the links in the description of this YouTube video. Everything I'm talking about tonight, I'll put all the links to get started right below the video. If you're on the blog, just scroll right down. If you're on YouTube, it'll be right in the description of that YouTube video. But let's not waste any more time. Let's get going here tonight. We get the calendar and the week planned out ahead of us. Let's grab a look at the charts here now. We get some oil. S&P, NASDAQ, and of course, the gold here for us today. I'm going to jump in here first, the black gold, though, the Texas tea, the crude oil futures. And what do we know about oil? Well, first of all, we know we're bullish in a bull market. I think it's pretty easy to see, right? We know we're bullish here right now. In a bull market, I want to buy at support. So I'm looking for levels of support, like the bottom of this channel, right? Like this 
what is called falling support, right? That will be a great level of support. I've got my range, this range expansion area, that's gonna be a great level of support. So we know we're bullish, I wanna buy off of support. What else do we know we have right now? A very strong move recently. Right, We see this market closing firmly right at its highs with a strong leg higher. Now, what does that tell me? A strong leg higher tells me we should see one more leg in the same direction. It's relatively rare for a strong move not to pull back and do it again, right? Usually you'll get that pullback after a strong move. So trying to sell this market right now, probably not gonna be a good strategy until we can get a pullback, a retest, and then think about being a seller from there. So I wanna be a buyer at support because we're bullish and we know we have a very strong recent move, which has certainly given me some concerns about being a seller and it tells me that these buyers are probably trying to make a run up for that measured move early in the Asian session. What else do we know right now? We also know we're, we're pretty much sitting right at the top of this channel, right? We were waiting here pretty much all afternoon today, trying to wait for this thing to pull back off the high of that channel and you'll notice it just never pulled back and then of course towards the end of the session i think everybody kind of get excited about a possible rate cut from the fed the s p the dow the nasdaq was all rallying i think oil got kind of wrapped up in it as well so we never got that pullback here i would love to get that pullback if we can get that pullback still that would be wonderful i just worry though they've got one thing on their mind right now and that is that measured move as we go higher or possibly even up into that runaway zone around 50 bucks a barrel, 49, 54, right to that 50, 50 area as we go higher. So let's put this plan together here. It's a pretty simple plan here for the oil. We know we want to buy. I just want to buy into that measured move overhead. So we really got to be careful there. So what if we go, let's see, what if, what if we keep going higher here right now? If we keep going higher, there are really three basic scenarios I'm watching for as we, if we keep going higher. One of them is going to be a strong move up into a range around this measured move. Very likely, once we get to that big two-legged move, that's a, it's, a, it's a big move up, right? Almost a five-dollar move off of those, right, off of those lows from earlier this morning. And so we know there's a likelihood for a trading range up here. If we go bullish up into a range, and you'll know it's a range because it'll start going sideways, right? You'll see a bunch of those, right, overlapping candlesticks, flat moving averages, right? So you'll know it's a range when you see it. Once I I find my range then what I'll do is I'll go back and look at these levels back here right look at these levels back here and try to find a seller failure pattern to buy underneath the range that's the key once we get up to that measured move, I don't want to buy into that measured move. I want to buy low, right? Buy at support in a bull market. If we start seeing it run sideways on us, that's going to be the first clue here. We know we're bullish. We know we're into a range and I'm looking for what I call a seller failure setup just below the low of that trading range. Now, another pattern I'm watching for will be what I call a one, two, three breakout. Now, we know we're at the top of this channel, right? So this is a big level of resistance here overhead. If I can get a strong move, which we already have right now, but if I can get them to hold that pullback and jump, if we can really jump off that moving average, right? Push on through the measured move. Now what I'm gonna do is, I know at that point where they're trying to go, right? They're trying to get up to that 49, 54, 49 half area. So if they can get, you know, again, we already have the, we already have one leg up, nice strong leg up. If I can get this pull back to the moving average, get a jump off the EMA, I have no problem buying the pullback to the low of that hidden channel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw that channel a little bit wider than I right than I normally would. That way I can wait for a much deeper pullback. Does that make sense? I call that, by the way, I call that a one, two, three breakout into a hidden channel pullback. Now, there's one more pattern as we go higher, and that's called a two try trap, right? So if we go higher here, strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high trap low 
this would really be the pattern I hope we get here in the short term if you're trading in Asia right now. Now watch how this pattern sets up. It starts off with a strong move. We already got a strong move. Now all we need is a little bit further shallow pullback and a higher high. If I can get that higher high, now I know buyers are waiting right below that swing low and they'll try to hit that sucker right when it comes in. An added benefit to this would be if you can get into this before we get up into that measured move. If not, I would much rather see like a one, two, three, and then into a two try trap from there. So same basic pattern, right? Same basic pattern here. But again, you'd want to get through, you know, you want to see some strength going through that measured move. Again, we have a pretty good idea of where they're trying to go, right? Short term up to the 25 measured move, longer term up to that 49 54, right? 50 bucks a barrel is really the big objective there. So now we get a pretty good plan if the market goes higher here. What if we end up going back and sitting inside this range? What do we do? Well, what I'll do is I'll use the size of the move up to project the size of the move down. That will give me additional level of support down here. And I'll simply look to buy using what I call a, a, a basically it's a breakout failure, a seller failure pattern below that low. This is the same pattern I talked about earlier if the market went sideways after it runs higher. So if we sit, right, if we go back into this range right now, this is a very big clue, this trading range, right? If we get back into that range though, I no longer want to trade inside the range. I love this rising support trend line, love the low of that channel, love the, ba the battle zone down there. That whole area there is a ripe area, right, that we can use here. So one thing would be if we go back into that range for a while, sit, 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 right? Now wait for it to make a move lower. Usually this will be about equal, the amount move above, the amount move below. It won't be exact, but it should be it should be roughly equal to it. Once I get that strong move down, you know what's going to happen, right? Those sellers, they're going to think this thing has reversed. They'll come in. They'll try to sell, right? Get, get, that, get that channel right there. They'll try to sell now off that breakout pullback, right? The problem is, look what you're selling. You're selling right into major support. So if I can get those rookies, right, to make that mental mistake and try to sell that pullback, now we know exactly where their stops are. Now we know where their pain points are. And now I can be a buyer running back up, right, into that range here. Target, of course, at that point is top of the range and leave that runner up to retest that high. Beautiful opportunity. If, if we can get that market going sideways and then look for those buys just below the low of that trading range. Last but not least here now, what if this market tumbles, right? We may easily hear from OPEC and they may say, nope, we're not going to cut production. And the market may say, well, then we aren't going higher anymore. And they may really tumble all the way back down to the low of that channel. Now, I do want to be a buyer down here because it is overall bullish. But think about a couple scenarios here as we go. If this thing really tumbles, what's going to happen? The bears are going to try to fill that gap at 4526. That was the gap. It's been filled already, but as we've seen a lot lately, that weekend gap, that 26 level is a big magnet. So I've got to be careful if this market really collapses. I've got to be careful now. Those bears are going to give it a good, a good try here to get that right, to hold that pullback. What I want to do is if the market really collapses down for us, I still would like to buy down here, but I've got to be a little more patient. What I look for is I'm going to look for what I call a nested failure pattern. And that is as we pull back, I'm anticipating the sellers are going to have a lot more confidence if it really shoots lower. And because of that, I'm going to give them two tries here now to get this job done. One try to sell, higher high. Two try to sell. Now, once I've got, again, this is a failure pattern. It's just a little bit more juiced up, right? It's two tries for these for these sellers. Then we know now where those stops are. Then we know now where the pain point is, right? 
That's the most important part. That's where the stops are getting run. That's where those counter trend sellers, right, are going to be in pain. And that's where I want to be buying the stops, buying pullbacks, and running back up into that trading range. Does that make sense, guys? Right? So if we sit inside the range, it's just straight up failure patterns. But if this thing slices right through that trading range, right, now we kind of know what they're trying to do, right? Now they're trying to go back and retest the lows. Now they're going to give it a, right, they're going to give it a good heave ho here. Let them try once, let them try twice, and we'll buy into those stop losses. And again, oftentimes it's a failure into a pullback combination, and we'll run right back up into that trading range. The Obviously, the next scenario would be if they hold that pullback, right? If we get a strong move down and they can hold that pullback now, what is that? That's going to be a one, two, three reversal, right? Absolutely. What I'll do is if I can get those bears to jump off the moving average, right? Just like the buyers jumped off the moving average here to take control earlier today. If I can get those bears to hold that pullback, now we know we have a one, two, three reversal. Anytime I have a one, two, three reversal, one, two, three reversal, I mark up those lows, I find that high, and I'm selling off the top of that hidden channel. It's a remarkably simple way to do it. The hardest part is, is you can't trust that first pullback. Believe me, I want to, right? It would make me a lot more money. The problem is, though, it's untrustworthy. You can't trust that first pullback. But once I get that one, two, three reversal, now we know. Now we know those bears, right, are back in control. And now I can sell off the top of that hidden channel. So now, at this point now, I'm just going to wait here and see what we get here in the overnight. We're listening in to hear what we get from OPEC, if we get anything from OPEC at all, as we get closer on, right, later on this week. And again, don't forget, right, don't forget, to come join me every morning, right? I'll put the trade room, right? The registration for the trade room membership in the description of this YouTube video. But what if you're not gonna be with me tomorrow in the trade room? The next best thing is to grab the free trading course. I'll put a button in the upper right-hand corner here. It's a little pop-up here, right? After I publish the video here. I'll put that, I'll put a link up there for the free trading course for you. If you're not going to be with me tomorrow in the trade room, doing it with me, the next best thing is to grab the free trading course because I'm going to go over my three-step strategy, my four favorite entry setups. You'll see hundreds of examples of how we apply those setups to our favorite futures markets. So again, I'll put that free course link in the upper right-hand corner. And again, all the links I'm talking about right now be right below the video. If you're on the blog, just scroll right on down. If you're on YouTube, everything's in the description of that YouTube video. Make sure you get registered for tomorrow morning or grab that free course if you can't be there with me. Next up here, let's grab some S&P. S&P, of course, is bullish as well, right? You can see that pretty obvious here on the S&P. Had a pretty big run here this afternoon. Most of this, we assume, is on the hopes of some stimulus from the Fed, right? Some rate cuts, right? Some more, some more, some more uh, cheap money, right? Coming into the markets. What else do we know? We know we're bullish. We want to buy at support. We know we're bullish with a very strong run higher, right? Now that strong run higher. What does that tell me? It tells me don't even think about trying to short this thing. I realize, I realize we have seen some job, right? Some job boning back and forth, some straight up, some straight up, right? Some straight up, straight down, straight back up. I do realize we have seen some of that volatility, but that volatility is very unreliable. When I want to, if, if, if I see a strong move up here, I'm anticipating another leg in the same direction. I know we're bullish. I want to buy at support. I'm identifying support levels at 3039. I've got support levels at 3020. I've got support levels at the low of this hidden channel. There's no shortage of support levels right now. I just need to get a pullback here off of these highs. What else do we know right now? We also know we're, we're relatively high up. You'll notice here we are one big leg, two big legs. You could easily say we're kind of two and a half, maybe two and three quarter legs higher here. You know, it wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if this market went a bit sideways here in the next few hours. So we do want to be ready for if the market goes sideways here as well. I think that solves, I think that covers covers most of the bases here. Uh, we can see obviously a measured move as we go higher and that 3092 area, 3093 area is a major turning point from those prior swings there. So we 
have a lot to worry about as we go higher. There's not a lot of open space here, right, as we try to make this move higher. And I think the biggest thing, I think the biggest thing, we know we're bullish. We know we have a strong move up. The, the biggest thing I see right now is you can see we're almost three big legs up. These are not small legs by any means. These are relatively big legs, which usually, nothing's guaranteed, obviously, but usually the following day, well, you've got three big legs up. We're going to see some sort of at least short term, right, find some sort of trading range. So that's what I'm anticipating here for tomorrow. So let's play that game, right? What if we go up? What if we go down, right? What if we go sideways? If we keep going higher here, if we keep going higher here, hold on one second, reset the software here real quick. Hold on, come on. If we keep going higher here right now, my biggest thing is I can look at this as a two try trap. So if we keep going higher, I'm going to look for a trap right below that, right, right below that low, right? So if we keep going higher, this becomes my favorite setups, which is a two, basically a two try trap pattern. But I'm going to want to see, I'm going to want to see another strong leg here. Right, we we'll want to see another higher high, then I'll mark up that low, and that's where we start looking for, right, that, again, what I call a two-try trap pattern. Now, we may also see this mark run up, right, and just go sideways up here, you know, and if it runs up and goes sideways up here, what's the plan? The plan is I'm going to find other levels of support, right, try to incorporate those levels along with what I call a seller failure pattern. It looks like, a, it basically looks like a breakout pullback failure is what it is, right? It's simply a seller failure. So if we end up running higher here and we go into that measured move, keep your eyes open for a range up here, okay? Don't be buying high. Wait for the buyers to run out of bullets. Wait for the market to pull back. When it pulls back, what happens a lot is, is those sellers will think the market has reversed. They'll sell into that pullback, and you can buy right into those stop losses. That's the easiest way to trade a range environment. We saw a great example back here, right? Went up, chopping around here. Look what happens. The market pulls back, right? The bears think the market's reversed. They try to sell off of it, right? That is a great example right there of a seller failure below the low of a range bound environment, right? See that right there, right? So we go down, the bears come in, they try to sell off the moving average, and we're just simply buying those stops for a rally back up to retest the high. Same thing right here will apply up top here, right? We go up, we go sideways. Once I know I have a range, I wait for the pull back. I wait for those bears to try and fail. And we're just simply buying into the stop losses of those counter trend breakout sellers, right? Not a very reliable breakout pullback, right? Like this one, not a very reliable breakout pullback there. Those are two setups I'm watching for as we go. One more, one more would definitely be if they keep running through that high. At that point now, we have what? A one, two, three breakout. I'm gonna mark up that high. I'm gonna draw my channel off that low, find that hidden channel, and buy the low of that hidden channel. Now keep in mind, this will require us to really push through that measured move on some strength, right? We're not, I'm not talking about a move up and bouncing back here, right? I'm talking about a one strong move, two pull back, three strong move through, right? Like what measured move? Like I didn't see a measured move, that type of momentum, then I know I can rely, draw the trend line, go down to those lows, find that hidden channel low, and then we're going to buy the low of that hidden channel pullback, right? I call this, again, a one, two, three breakout into a hidden channel pullback. And remember, guys, tomorrow morning, we'll trade all of this together in the trade room, or make sure you grab that free course that I keep talking about linked up in the upper right-hand corner. Now, what if we go sideways here? Like I said, we're almost three legs up right now. There's a good chance, right, we go sideways here in the overnight. If we go sideways up here, the plan really stays the same. I've got some levels of support. I've got some levels of support. I'm just simply waiting for the buyers to get that pullback. Get those counter trend sellers to try to sell the breakout pullback pattern, right? And we'll buy right into those stop losses. Pretty easy if we go sideways. The plan is pretty simple. What if we pull back here? 
If we pull back, it's looking like we may have a two-legged pullback, which means I can draw a trend line off those highs. I can buy the pullback on the other side of that trend line using what I call a two-legged pullback or a 2LP, right? That is a setup I'm watching for. The most common setup, though, is always going to be that nice, strong move down. The bears, again, you know, think about this one back here, right? The bears think this thing's reversed. They try to sell that pullback, and now we have potential here for a seller failure into a bullish pullback combination for a retest of the high of that range, right? So imagine now we pull back down to these key levels of support, down to the low of that channel. Once we get the pullback, we know that sellers are likely going to confuse this as being a reversal. We wait for those bears to commit off the moving average and we're selling into those stop losses. Some of the easiest money you'll ever make is when the counter trend traders are getting stopped out and you're getting in going with the overall momentum. Once we see that failure, oftentimes it pulls right back to the moving average and you can double dip on that pullback, right? Sometimes though, be aware, sometimes that failure, what it does is it won't pull back. Right? Sometimes it rips higher, and if it rips higher, keep your eyes open for a two-try trap pattern. This is the same pattern we talked about earlier, except obviously, right, this one is on a much faster scale, right? It's a seller failure, right, into a bullish, what I call a two-try trap. One try, two try with a trap low, or, or yeah, trap low below that low, right? A bear trap below that low. These are some easy patterns we're watching for here tomorrow. We cover all these patterns, by the way, inside the free trading course, and you can find all the links I'm talking about tonight right below the video tonight in the description. Now, what if we really take a nosedive here? Right? What if this market takes a bath? What if we get another big leg down? What are my options? My first option would be to look for a nested failure, right? So if this thing really takes off the downside here, you know, it doesn't care about that reverse line, it doesn't care about that low of that channel. If it really takes off the downside, what do we do? Can I still buy it? I can still buy it as long as I wait for what? I wait for the nested, the one try, you got it, the two try, then I know where my stops are, right? Now I know where my stops are, and I can, of course, buy into those stops. Again, if we get a real sharp pullback, you want to wait for that nested, right? Let them try it. Let them try it once. Let them try it twice. They're not going to give up as easily if they get a real deep pullback, right? You know, small pullbacks, yeah, buy right into those stop losses. But deep, deep pullbacks, though, now momentum becomes a big concern. We're still looking to buy into stops. And oftentimes, oftentimes, these deep pullbacks, they will rip higher. When they rip higher without you like that, don't chase after them. I always like to look for that to try trap. The ideal scenario, obviously, is to get that failure into a pullback, right? The pullback would be great, but a lot of times during these really strong, you know, a lot of times these deep, deep pullbacks, when those when those sellers fail, it it oftentimes just rips higher. When it rips higher like that, just wait for that trap, right? A little trap low here. Again, we call it two try trap. All right, easy, easy patterns. If we can get that deep, deep pullback, you just gotta wait for them. And then obviously, if we do get that deep pullback will be some options here. How do the bears take control? They've got to hold the pullback, right? So if this moves lower, it's one. They've got to hold two, and then a strong move down, right? If they can give me a strong move down from there, now I can grab that low. I can grab that high. Obviously, this is not drawn to scale here, right? But if I can get that one, two, three reversal, now I can look for that hidden channel pullback. Okay. Again, I'm not going to try to tackle, I'm not going to try to get in on that first pullback, but I will definitely be looking for right, a way to get in on that second one. So again, if we do see a strong move lower, right, I'm anticipating a range up here again, right? But if we do see a strong move lower, my options are going to be either a nested failure to buy back up, right? Nested failure oftentimes into a two try trap, or do we get that strong move lower and do those bears, do they hold off the moving average? If that's the case, we mark up the low, we mark up the high, and we're selling off of that high, right? Selling off of that high. Now, sometimes what happens is you get that big move down and it won't pull back, 
right, keeps going and going and going and going. So if we see this thing, right, you know, this is this is possible too. Anything's anything's possible here in these markets right now. If we get a strong move down here now, right, the bears hold, but they don't pull back and it keeps going, right? You know what I mean, right? It won't pull back on you. That's the time when you want to use that two try trap, right? Two try traps are great when the market is clearly aggressive. Right, but you're having a hard time getting a deep pullback. Right, you may not get that deep pullback all the way up, right, to the high of that channel. If you start seeing this thing really take a take, take a bath over here, right, if it really starts to tumble and it's kind of grinding lower, right, kind of like how, right, kind of like how it grinded higher, right. If it has that kind of grindy feeling to it. Those are just FOMO traders, right? They're not going to get the whole pullback. Wait for that shallow pullback, that lower low, right? Then that tells you now you can usually get a tighter channel here off that low, off that high, right? And hit it from there. A lot of this has to do with, though, how the market responds as it's going lower. A lot of times it'll one, two, three reversal. It'll pull right back to the high of that channel and you can give it a good whack. In this example, though, right, if they keep on pushing after that one, two, three, right? If, they, if they're not pulling back, look for that shallow pullback, right? And this will usually be just above the moving average. And again, usually just off the top of that channel. We call those two try trap patterns. They're one of my favorites when a market either too high to buy or too low to sell, but we know there's some good momentum still left to be used here. I think we're looking pretty good here now on the S&P. The buyers want to get up to that measured move. The sellers, obviously, they get a lot to look forward to. If they can get their hands on this, they get a potential big move all the way back down to that low. But obviously, though, they've got to, they got to prove this thing first, right? We can't go sell in this market until they prove it, right? We may see another leg down after last week's big bloodbath. Right now, though, we're too bullish right now to call that reversal. We have to wait for that reversal. And again, we'll do all of this together tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We open up the trade room. Next up here, over on the NASDAQ tonight, what do we know about the NASDAQ? Much like the S&P, we know the NASDAQ is bullish. And of course, in a bull market, I want to be a buyer at support. So of course, I'm lining up my reversal lines, my reversal lines. I've got my trend lines coming in underneath. These are really, really attractive areas down here inside this 8700 area, 8735 to 86 and three quarters. That's a really attractive area here for a pullback. What else do we know? We also know a very strong recent move. What does a strong move tell us? We should expect to see another leg in the same direction. It basically tells us be very careful trying to sell this market until they get that pullback and that retest. What else do we know right now? We also know we have this measured move. You can see that a mile away. One big leg up, two big legs up, and this is definitely something that is concerning. We're sitting right on top of not a very small two-legged move whatsoever. This is a pretty big, big move here. Now, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of times these trending markets, they'll go three legs into a range like I saw on the S&P on the previous chart. With this chart though, these legs are so big that we might not get a third leg here, right? We may just get that range to form right as we go higher here or, or, as, or as we go sideways here because it's around that measured move. So I would anticipate that just like the S&P, right? I do anticipate the S&P people want to go sideways. I would anticipate some sideways movement here on the NASDAQ overnight as well. So we want to be aware of that. What else do we have going on here? That's about all the clues that we have. The sellers, obviously, they want to get back down to retest the weekly low at 82.25. The buyers want to get through this measured move and hopefully up into our runaway zone at 9,000 up to 9,094. We'll call that 9,000 to 9,100. This whole area here is where these buyers are trying to get to. So now we've got a pretty good idea of where we want to go. Let's try to see now if we can structure the entry into our next trade here. Now, obviously, if the market keeps going higher here, right, keeps going higher, for example, I've got one, two, three with a trap low, okay? What is that called again? That's called a two-try trap, right? You'll know this because you'll see a shallow pullback in a new higher high. 
right? Two try trap. Okay, other option would be a one, two, three breakout. Mark that high, mark that low. We're buying off the low of that hidden channel. And by the way, how do you know the difference? How would you know whether or not it's a two try trap or not? A two try trap will not be a big explosive move higher. Right? A two try trap will be slightly higher, get that higher high, and then of course it'll pull back relatively quickly for that trap entry. Right? And again, those traps are usually just below the moving average. Right, A lot of times, they'll be coming in off of right, kind of like a little hidden channel in here. So we'll definitely be updating that if we get that two-try right, trap pattern. Another scenario th you're thinking right now is, well, what if we, right, what if we keep going higher here? One second here. Sorry about this. Trying to move too fast here for us. Oh, come on. There we go. Second scenario here is a one, two, three breakout, right? Now, again, this will have a real strong move up. In this case now, we don't want to buy too high, right? We don't want to buy up at the destination they're trying to get to. I want to make sure I mark up that high, though, mark up that low, and now I know where I do want to be a buyer. Now we know we do want to be a buyer off the low of that hidden channel. Again, this will be a lot more dramatic as we go higher. I, I can't trust the first pullback here. We're too high up. But if they can push through these highs here, then I can start to think, okay, we're going to probably get some buyers in the low of that hidden channel. That is a really easy setup to keep your eyes on here as we go higher here. Now, again, earlier, as I mentioned earlier, I would also anticipate here, right, a possible range. You know, we're, we're two very big legs up, right? Big move up here to finish off today's trading session. You know, the buyers may say, this is way too high for us to buy. Sellers may not dare sell this market yet, right? I'm sure a lot of people are, you know, holding this, right? Trying to go back up to those all-time highs. So we may not get much of a pullback here for a while or a move going higher. If we keep going sideways here, what's the plan? Once we know the range, what do we do? We find those prior levels of support, right? We wait for the pull back. We wait for those rookie traders. Really, I assume they're rookies. Professionals wouldn't make this mistake, right? We wait for rookies who love to trade breakouts, get caught trading that breakout pullback, right? And we buy into those stop losses. Again, it's a failure setup, right? A straight failure setup, a seller failure pattern underneath the low, right, of this trading range. Now, we know we're doing up. We know the plan is going sideways. What if we what if we pull back here now? If we pull back, keep your eyes open for a two-legged pullback, right? Trend line comes over, up and over and in, right? Two-legged pullback. We call it a 2LP, right? A two-legged pullback, one leg, two leg. Draw that trend line over, get up and over. We're buying the bounce, right, off of that trend line. Again, you're going to want to make sure this is all combined with Remember, we don't just trade patterns, guys. We trade the location plus the pattern. Very, very important difference there, right? If you just trade patterns, you're not going to get very consistent results. If you want to get more consistent results, more dependable, more reliable results every day, you've got to learn how to use the patterns in the right locations. In a trending environment, it's channels, right? In a range environment, it's the range highs and lows, right? Fading those breakouts. We'll talk a lot more about where these patterns are the best to trade. We'll talk a lot more about that in the free course I mentioned in the upper right-hand corner, or again, all the links including tomorrow morning's right trade room links to get registered as a member is right in the description of this YouTube video. So we know if the market pulls back, right? Look for that one two-legged pullback, draw that trend line over, up and over from there. That's pretty easy. Um, we may not get that, right? It may just pull right on back here. If it pulls right on back, we now look for a seller failure into a bullish right pullback combination. Target, of course, is back up to retest the high. You can see a very subtle example back here, right? We, of course, pull back. The bears try and fail. They go up, they pull back, and they run. That is a seller failure into bullish pullback setup, right? So strong move down. Not that strong, right? But he pull back. The sellers come in. They try to sell off the moving average. We know exactly. Remember, it's a bull market. 
right? Sellers who are trying to sell that pullback, they are on the wrong side of the odds. The odds are not in their favor. And once I know where their stops are, it's pretty easy pickings there, buying into stops. And of course, right, trying to get that pullback combination, right? We oftentimes see these two patterns stacked up on top of each other, a failure pattern into a, excuse me, into a pullback pattern for a retest of that high. Now, what if we really tumble, right? What if we really tumble now? If we really tumble now, now we're thinking what? Possible reversal, or nested failure, right? So now if we really tumble down now, yes, I do want to buy low, but no, I don't want to buy right into what I anticipate to be quite a bit of sellers trying to hold this next pullback. So what I'll do is I'll wait for what I call the nested failure, right? The one try, the two try. Now we know everybody's in. Now we know right where their stops are, and now we can buy into those stops. And again, oftentimes, Times these nested failures, they're not going to pull back right away. They're going to really run strong as they go higher. So as they run, look for that two try trap pattern. That'd be a real easy follow up setup for you to add to your position, right? Or to get in on another trade, going back up where? Going back up to retest the high. Anytime we see a pull back, there's one objective, and that is to retest that interim high. So make sure you're taking your profit targets off that high, right? Leave a runner if you want to, but make sure you take the majority of your profit off at that retest of the high. Leave a contract if you want as a runner, but don't get greedy. Remember, the, 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 the money you want to make is the consistent reliable right profit each day retest those highs that's the most reliable target right for those buyers now obviously if we can get a real strong move down here that also tells me now these bears they might be able to hold this thing we might get a one two three reversal where i can mark up those lows mark up that high and sell off the high of that channel again i would not recommend trying to pick the reversal by trading that pullback the last couple times they've tried to pick that reversal it's failed on them and you know what happens when the counter trend traders fail they get stopped out and the market runs higher so please don't make that same mistake that i made when i was a rookie right i don't want you to get caught on the wrong side of this like i used to all the time but if it does make a strong run down if they can hold that pullback and jump off the ema well, great. Now I'm happy to mark up that low, mark up that high, right, and sell off that high. And again, sometimes, you know, sometimes this thing turns ugly and this thing just starts to run and run and run. You know what I mean? And it won't pull back. If it won't pull back on you, just grab that two try trap. Right. And you'll know it because, you know, usually what will happen is, you know, once this thing starts to get, you know, moving lower here, you'll start seeing it pull back. If it doesn't pull back, though, and you get a shallow pullback and a lower low, now what I'll do is I'll mark up that low. I'll mark up a, a more, right, a much more steeper channel, right, because now I know the mark's more aggressive and I'll look to sell off the high of that variation. Make sense? Right. So one, two, three reversals or into that one, two, three, into that two try trap pattern. I realize these are very similar, but it all has to do with how the market feels as it's moving lower, right? How it feels as it moves lower. And of course, we're gonna do this together so we can look, right? You can come in and join me tomorrow, eight o'clock Eastern time, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when I say, see how it won't pull back, right? If a market won't pull back, we know something's up. We know trying to get somewhere, then it's time for us to find our way in, right? Using a trap or a failure or whatever pattern, right? Fits the market's context. So NASDAQ is looking pretty good here. Buyers want to get up to that 9,000. Bears want to get back down to retest the weekly low. I'm pretty excited for the NASDAQ session tomorrow morning as well. Let's wrap things up, though, now with the gold. Over on the gold, the yellow metal here right now. Now, I'll tell you, gold is a pretty interesting market right now. What do we know about gold here? We know that gold was bullish, right, going into a trading range here this morning. Now, trading ranges tell us to look for seller failures below the low of that range. But look what happened. That seller failure failed. 
Now, by the way, you would never want to take that failure pattern because it was right inside that range here, right? So this would not be a trade I would take because it's setting up right inside the range. But what you can see right now is you'll notice here, right? We have what's what's pretty clearly a a, a, a failure of that range, right? We should have seen these, right, these buyers come in and run this thing right back up at least to retest the high of the range, if not retest the high of day here today. But instead, it looks to me like they've got some pretty good momentum here going back to the downside. So it looks to me like these bears may have, may have slid in here somehow and grabbed control of this market. And they're probably trying to hit that low at that 1565, 1563 and change down there. That's where the bears are trying to go. What I'd like to do now is, is try to find a way to catch the buyers on the wrong side here because I know what's going to happen is you're going to see a lot of buyers who are going to be looking at this going, you know what, I can buy Right, I can buy that trap low. So we know we're, we're, I would say, a little more bearish than we are bullish right now. It's just by just by a smidge, right? Not that, not that much, but enough to make this important. I know we have a range, and we know that anytime we see a range, what do we do? We buy low, we sell high. Well, the buyers tried once, the buyers tried twice, right? And they're rolling over now. That I think is the biggest clue right now because now with those buyers on the ropes, now we can start to look for sellers to get their shot to sell off the high of this hidden channel. So let's talk about this here because there's, there's a very important pattern, right? I'm watching for here to get short, right, off of this high. So what if we go higher? What if we go lower here? The buyers want to get back up to retest that high, right? Buyers want to get all the way up to that measured move, right? Obviously, buyers want to get that big right, measured move higher. They want to go back to retest the high. The bears here, they want to get back down to retest those lows. So let's think about this here now. What if the market goes, right, what if we go higher here? If we go higher here to be a buyer on this, I need to see some momentum because I don't feel confident right now. I don't feel comfortable right now being a buyer right into this falling resistance. Once this thing goes one, two, three reversal, now you're gonna have people drawing trend lines off here, trying to sell off this high here. So this is where I'm looking for a short. So if I wanna be a buyer, I'm gonna to have to see one of two scenarios. One would, well actually probably three different possibilities here to be a buyer. One would be, the easy one would be, a strong move up, a pull back to the moving average, and a strong move through, right? That would be the easy one, right? Like we saw back here. Right? It's a strong move up, a pull back, and a go. What do you do? You mark up the highs, you mark up the lows, and you buy the low of that channel. Right? It's called a one, two, three breakout or one, two, three reversal, right? Into a hidden channel pullback. So that same pattern can be applied over here, right? Strong move up, pull back to the moving average, strong move off the moving average. Once I have that one, two, three reversal, also one, two, three breakout, I can mark up the highs, I can mark up that low, and I can buy the low of that hidden channel. Same basic pattern we've talked about quite a bit today already, right? That two, that one, two, three reversal into a hidden channel pullback. Or we may not get that full one, two, three. We may just see a very strong, sharp move higher. If we get a strong move higher, we know where they're trying to go. They're trying to go back to retest that high. The problem is, I wanna buy high, I wanna buy low. So if I see a strong move up right now that doesn't care about that sell zone, now I know to try trap. Remember, to try trap patterns are my favorite setups here when I'm running out of open space. Right? If we get a strong move higher here, again, not a one, two, three reversal, but a strong leg up, I'm watching for that shallow pullback with a higher high, followed by that trap low. And again, this will usually be just below the moving average, right? I always would go out, find a new hidden channel, right? Buy the low of that, right? Those are the patterns I'm looking for. But again, that will be a very strong initial run higher here, right? Not, not the same thing as the one, two, three breakout or one, two, three reversal that I'm talking about. Now, what I'd also like to see here is, is a short trade here off these highs. I really like how we got the one try, the two try, and the failure. That tells me now that sellers are going to start coming in and looking to short 
up around the highs of this hidden channel. Their target is, is to retest that low. What I'd like to do is, is get up to the high of the channel. I know the buyers are gonna wanna buy this. I'm gonna give them once, I'm gonna give them twice, and sell into it from there. I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful on this because we're so close to that range, right? So what I'm going to do is let them try once, let them try twice, right? Once we see those buyers trying a couple times, now we know where stops are and we're selling into those stop losses, right? Does that make sense? So because we're going to be, again, I would anticipate the buyers are not going to go, go that easily here. So if we can get up in this, right, in this sell zone here above the moving average, I've got my channel coming down. I'm going to look for those buyers to try once, try twice. Now I got you right where I want you, and I can sell right into those stop losses for that move coming back down. And who knows, right? Maybe we get lucky. Maybe we get a failure into a pullback combination, make that run back down again, right? That is a definite possibility here as we go off that high. A buyer failure, right, into a seller pullback. Where's my target? Down to the low of that channel. Definitely leave a runner right down to retest that 68 area right for the runner for those bears, right? So as the market goes higher, that's the plan, right? Again, we got three different patterns as we go higher. Another thing I want to, want to turn you on to is, is what if we go back into the range and we sit here for a while? The next thing I want to do now is, is start to think about it'll be, it'll be right back to that range and what do we do with the range? We buy low, we sell high. I'm gonna be watching right underneath this low and I'll be looking for that seller failure right into, right into, back into that range here. Same basic idea. Now again, we kept getting failures earlier today inside of that range. Remember, if we go back into that range right here, wait, again, the assumption here is it's gonna sit sideways there for a while. Okay, that will absorb any momentum, and all we're left is is a bull move into a trading range, right? So if we sit there for a while, I'm going to watch for a pullback. The deeper, the better. Wait for that pullback. Again, the assumption is we're sitting inside the range. Wait for that deep pullback. Get that moving average coming over. Get those bears to try to sell off the EMA, and we can buy right into those stop losses for that move going right back higher, right? If they hold that pullback and make a run off of it, what is that called? A one, two, three breakout, right? Mark the low, mark the high. Yeah, you're getting you're, you're getting good at this now, right? Now you see we're using the same basic patterns, right? Just slightly differently depending on the market conditions that we're trading with. Right, so again, that's the plan if the mark goes back up into that range. If we don't, right, maybe we end up going lower here and going sideways down, remember? Maybe, maybe it grinds lower and goes sideways. If it goes lower and goes sideways here, now what do we do? We mark up our level of, of resistance here overhead. We wait for those buyers to come in. We wait for those buyers to try to buy the pullback and we're selling into those stop losses, right? It's a buyer failure pattern above the top of a trading range. Not rocket science, you just gotta wait for that range and sell, right? Don't buy the breakout pullback, sell it as it tries to break out, pull back, and we're selling right into those stop losses. Now, last but not least, if they can hold this, right? So they pull back, they run, they go, wonderful. Mark up that low, mark up that high. The goal here now is to get into this before we get back down into that 68 area, right? That's gonna be really, really important because that's the objective for these sellers. I wanna get short F resistance, but I don't wanna get short right into these levels of support. Then of course, right, if the market just tanks, look for that two try trap pattern, right? If the market, again, if it won't pull back for you, right? Anytime a market will not pull back for me, I now know, right? I'm probably gonna have to get more aggressive with it. Shallow pullback, right? Trap high. Usually this will be somewhere right on top of a very narrow hidden channel, just above the high of that moving, or just, just above the moving average, above that prior swing high. And again, the big objective here is to get back down into that 1568 area here for the gold. So we think we got them all covered here now on the GC. The yellow metal is all ready to go here right now. I know how to buy it. I know how to sell it. 
I got a great plan in store for us tomorrow morning. And speaking of tomorrow morning, the best way to do this is to come out and do it with me. Every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, we get together every morning to trade this stuff together. Again, I'll put all the links to get registered for both our free trading classes as well as our full-time membership so that you're always with me in the trade room. I'll put all the links in the description of this YouTube video. Grab the free course. If I don't see you guys tomorrow morning as a client, make sure you grab that free course, right? And as always, please feel free to pick up the phone and give me a call here in the office. Don't be afraid to use that live support tool. I'll be happy to give you some help walking you through how to register for the free course or walking you through how to make sure you get registered as a member and how to make sure you're locked and loaded for tomorrow morning's trading session. All right, guys? So get registered either for the free course or the membership, and I will see you guys tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, like always. If not tomorrow morning, come back and see me again tomorrow night, and we'll do it all again tomorrow night, the next edition of our nightly newsletter. As always, great to be here with you. I apologize. Been a little bit late here this evening. Had some uh, technology problems in the office here this, this, this afternoon. We're pushing right on through it. So thanks for sticking around with me. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning at the opening bell or tomorrow night, same time, same place. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.